Okay. So guys, what I'll do is um, I'm gonna I'll I'll um, I'll send you guys an announcement on Blackboard that'll have the rest of this here because I'm recording it. It should be recording right now. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, the Wi-Fi still seems to be out. So uh, yeah, if you can just if anybody if, if somebody doesn't mind sending them a message or saying hey the Wi-Fi is out and you know I'm recording it, but if it comes back on, we'll. We'll see what, what the deal is. Uh, let me see. Where is my connection here? Let's try this. Uh, yeah. It's not even picking up the, the STC Wi-Fi today. Boo-hoo. Good shot. All right. Let's see. Let me try this again. Yeah, it's still not working. Okay. It's all right. We'll keep going here, you guys. But I am recording it, and uh, and I'll send this out later today on on the Wi-Fi is not working. Okay, so let's take a look here, you guys. So look, I'm going to draw my line going down here. There we go. Okay, and let's take a look at the next part. So similar problem, you guys. I'm going to leave this 0.4x here, and I'm going to distribute this guy right here. So I'm going to distribute that negative 0.2 to both pieces. Okay. So let's see, negative 0.2 times 3. I'm going to grab my calculator. Uh, 0.2 negative times 3 is a negative 0.6. So negative 0.6. Now, a negative 0.2, again, if it helps you all, think of that as a negative 1, right? Well, a negative and a negative I know is positive, and that would be positive 0.2 for the next is equal to 1.8. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to go ahead and combine terms like we did before. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these two x's. So one of them is a 0 0.4 and the other one is a 0 0.2. It's working now. Let's see. The Wi-Fi is back on. Let's see. Let me try this. No. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm not. Is anybody else getting Wi Fi? See, like I'm pulling mine up here, I'm still not seeing. Uh, see, because when I'm doing this one here, uh, like the only ones that are coming up are Jose, Adana, your phone's coming up, but like the STC one isn't coming up. Oh, okay, yeah. Like it's not even showing up right now, so I guess it's still, I guess it's still down. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine those x's, y'all. So we're going to combine the 0 0.4 and the 0 0.2. Let me clear this out. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2. Those are the numbers in front of my x's. That is a 0 0.6 for the next. Mine is 0 0.6 equals 1.8. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm going to um, add the 0 0.6 on both sides because it's a minus. So I'm going to go plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6. Those there will cancel, so that leaves me a 0 0.6x equals, let's see, 1.8 plus 0 0.6, 2.4. Good. And then what do we say our last step is? Divide. Divide by 0 0.6 on both sides. All right, let's see. So let me grab my calculator. 2.4 divided by 0 0.6 is equal to 4. Okay. So they take a little bit of time to do, you guys, right? So you can see 2.3. They take some time to do. The main thing you want to do is you make a choice. Are you going to put your X's on the left side or are you going to put the X's on the right side? You, you make that choice from the beginning. And again, it really doesn't make a difference. But if you move the smaller X to the bigger X, what that does is it makes sure that the number in front of my X is not negative. 
that's really the only thing it does. It just makes sure that when I, when the very last step when we said we're dividing, it just makes sure that whenever I'm dividing, I'm not dividing by a negative number. Okay. So we're going to go through a little bit of 2.4. I'm just going to go through about half of it today, y'all, and then we'll do the other half of 2.4 on uh, Thursday. Okay. So I'll give you a second to copy some of these problems down. And, and then we'll check our answers, and we'll see what we come up with. Uh, let me see, 2.1 and 2.2. Oh, let me see. I, don't, I know, I know, I'll come back to it in a second. It ain't going anywhere. Oh, man, you know what, it's not gonna let, it's, I'm not going to see it right now because because of the Wi-Fi, right? Um, it was the 2.1 and 2.2. The question is, when were they? When are they due? I want to say that 2.1 is probably due by tonight, maybe. I think. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember off the top of my head. And I can't. I can't get to this right now because of the Wi-Fi. But I'll keep checking here in a few to see if anything is coming up. 2.2 is it today? When was 2.1 due? Was it? February. Last week? Okay, so guys, uh, I'll, if you hadn't done 2.1, I'll extend it to this coming Thursday, okay? So in case you hadn't done it, I'll change the deadline once the once everything is back in business. Uh, yeah, so these, so again, 2.3 is due a week from the day. 2.4 and 3.1 will be due next Thursday, okay? You're welcome. So take a look here, y'all. We got 2.4 solving equations with fractions. Again, I'm going to go through half of the problems, and then we'll save the other half for uh, Thursday. But the objective, what we're going to do here, when we're solving these equations, I'm going to kind of give you all some rules. Number one, we're going to find the LCD of all the fractions. Number two, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that LCD. And then number three, we're going to solve. going to do here, y'all, for this first problem, it says solve 1 third x plus 5 6 equals 1 over 2. So I'm going to look at each of my denominators, 3, 6, and 2. And I want to find the common denominator between all of those. The easy, breezy, curvable way of doing this, you guys, is by pulling up the multiplication table. And what I'm going to do here, you guys, is I'm going to look at the three numbers that we had which were 2, 3, and 6. And I'm going to ask you guys, what's the first number that they all had in common? 6. To me, this is one of the reasons why I like using my chart. I can just look at it, and I can find the numbers, and, and they're there. So the common denominator for you guys is going to be 6. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'll come back to my problem. Okay. Step number one, find the LCD. We did, it was six. Step number two, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that number. Okay? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in either brackets or parentheses. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to multiply everything here, y'all, by six over one. Okay? Because six is the same thing as six over one. The reason I'm writing it over one is because I already have fractions, right? 
And remember, how do we multiply fractions? We go straight across, right? Okay, so let's deal with the tops first. Uh, what's 6 times 1? 6. That's the number in front of the x because there was an x right there. Uh, what's 6 times 5? 30. Good. Okay, and then finally, what's 6 times 1 again? 6. Okay, we did the tops. Y'all, we're going to do the bottom numbers now. We're going to go this way, this way, and this way. Okay. What's 1 times 3 on the bottom? Everybody agree 3? 1 times 6 is 6. And 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, if we did this right, y'all, all of our fractions are going to disappear. Okay? Question. How many times does 3 go into 6? We got a 2x. How many times does 6 go into 30? We got a 5. And 2 goes into 6? Look at this problem. Isn't this problem a lot better to do? We don't got any more fractions. Okay, we know how to solve this problem. If we got a plus 5, what are we going to put underneath it? A negative 5, right? Boom. And a negative 5 here. Okay, so we have a 2x equals, let's see, the 5s cancel. So 3 minus 5 should be something like minus 2. And then the very last step is to divide. And everybody agree, negative 2 divided by positive 2 is just a negative 1. Okay. This is going to be my process, y'all, for every one of these problems. I'm going to ask myself, what is the common denominator? I'm going to find the common denominator of all the fractions. I'm going to use my chart. I'm going to multiply everything by that number. If I do it right, all of my fractions are going to disappear. And I'm going to end up with a problem that's hopefully easier for me to do. Okay? Hopefully easier for me to do. Okay? So let's take a look at the next one that we got here. So the next one I have is 4 over 15 with an x plus 1 over 5 equals 2 over 3 with an x. Okay? First thing I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to look at my denominators, which are 15, 5, and 3, right? I got 15, 5, and 3. So, y'all, I'm going to think of those numbers, 15, 5, and 3. I'm going to come back to my multiplication table. Here we go. So the numbers that I'm interested in are 15, 5, and 3. So let me clean this up. 15, 5, and 3. What's the first number that they all have in common? 15, right? All you got to do is stare and compare. It's going to be right there, right? Okay, so yet, remember y'all, in the notes, I'm always providing y'all the link for the, I'll give you, I'm the ones that I put in the notes, y'all, is a 20 by 20 table. So it's actually bigger than this one, but you got, you got it right there. So again, it's going to be, should be easy for us to do, right? Okay, so now, let's see, let's come back over here. Oh, where did we go? Here we go. Okay, so 15 was our common denominator. So we're going to multiply everything, y'all, by 15 over 1. And we're going to go real, real slow. Okay. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, 15 times 4. If we use the calculator, y'all, that should give me, yeah, that should give me 60. That's the number in front of my x because there's an x right there. Uh, 15 times 1? 15, very good. 15 times 2? Excellent. Okay, so we multiplied the top numbers. We're going to do the same thing with the numbers on the bottom. So what's 1 times 15? 15, right? What's 1 times 5? 5. And what's 1 times 3? Right? Guys, I want you all to notice something. When we did this, even in the problem before, what's my bottom number here? 1, right? So when I multiply by 1, my bottom numbers stay the same. They don't change. Because when you multiply by 1, you get the same thing, right? 
Now again, if we did this right, you guys, all of our fractions should go away. Look, if I take my calculator and I say, put 60 divided by 15, boom, we come up with a 4. So we got a 4x right here. 5 goes into 15, 3 times. 3 goes into 30. That problem's a lot easier for us to do now, right? So again, if I find my denominator, y'all, these problems are going to work out nice and pretty. So minus 3 and minus 3. 4x, very good, equals 7. And then finally, the last step is to divide everything by, by 4. Um, I'm sorry? Um, yes, because I divided it out, right? When, yeah, when we can't simplify it, y'all, we'll just leave it as it is. Yeah, if it doesn't reduce, like in this case, uh, 4 and 7, I can't reduce them, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, question. Ah, you're right. My bad, y'all. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Oops. Yep, I made a mistake again. What's going on today, Omar? Look, there was an X right here. There was an X right here. Okay, you're you're right. Oops. Okay. Oops. Again. Oops, I did it again. Mm, like that, right? Okay, you're right. I'm sorry about that. So there was an X there. I just didn't see it. Sorry. Okay. All right. Remember, we got to do now. Sorry, guys. We got to get all the X's on one side. We're going to move the smaller X to the bigger X. Which one is smaller, 4X or 10X? Yeah. So let's do that. 4X, 4X. Okay. So we have 3 equals, let's see. Uh, what's 10 minus 4? 6. And... We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 6. And we should come up with something like x is 1 half, right? Yeah, we got a different answer, y'all, because I forgot about that x there. I just didn't see it. And so, yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, I still have a fraction. It's okay for me to have a fraction of my answer. All I'm really trying to do here, y'all, is just re like eliminate the x's, I'm sorry, the fractions when I'm going through the problem. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one I got here. I got x over 8 plus x over 4 equals negative 3 fourths. Let me ask you all a question. Do you know what the common denominator is between 8 and 4? 8, right? Good. And again, guys, if you're if you're uncertain, why is it 8? Why is it going to be 8? You're going to come back over here. You're going to look at 4. You're going to look at 8. The first number that they have in common is 8, right? So in case you, in case you get stuck, you can always go back and use your chart. But yes, the common denominator is going to be 8. All righty. So I'm going to go 8 over 1 here. And I'm going to multiply. I'm going to go real slow. Hopefully slower this time so I don't make any more. Okay, remember, y'all, the number in front of these X's, if I don't see them, are, are 1's, right? So 8 times 1X is an 8X. Uh, 8 times 1X, again, is another 8X. And 8 times negative 3 should be something like a negative 24. Okay. And then, remember, we're going to multiply the bottom numbers here. But look at the bottom number over here. The bottom number here is what? 8. Hold on. What's the bottom number right here? 1. So what happens when you multiply by 1? They stay the same. That stays 8, that stays 4, and that stays 4 as well, right? Okay. So, if we did this right, y'all, all of our fractions are going to go away. Uh, the 8s will cancel out, so that's a 1x. Uh, 4 goes into 8 twice, so that's a 2x. And 4 goes into negative 24, negative 6 times. 
Right? Again, the problem that we have here, y'all, hopefully a lot easier for us to solve because we don't have any more fractions, right? That's the beginning of the question right here. So what's 1x plus 2x? There you go. Equals negative 6. And then finally, we can divide both sides by 3. And I'm coming up with x equals a minus 2, right? All right, again, y'all, the objective is always going to be the same thing. We're going to look for the common denominator of all the fractions. We're going to multiply everything by that number. The fractions are going to go away, okay? So let's take a look-see at this next one here. Again, the first thing I'm going to do here, you guys, I'm going to think of that 15 as 15 over 1. Because I want to think of every number here, y'all, as, as a fraction, okay? So... I'm going to look at the three denominators that I have. I have a 1, I have a 2, and I have a 4. Between 1, 2, and 4, does anybody know what my common denominator would be? 4, right? So look, y'all, again, if I need to, I'm going to come back to my chart. I'm looking at 1, 2, and 4, right? So between 1, 2, and 4, here's 1, here's 2, here's 4, there's my Tom denominator, right? So guys, one thing I want to I want to give you all a heads up on when I'm doing my Tom denominator, it's going to be at least it's going to be at least that size or more. It should always be at least the size of the biggest number you got on the bottom, if not more. Okay. So since our Tom denominator is four, we're going to multiply everything here, y'all, by 4 over 1. Okay? So we're going to go through really, really slowly. 1, 2, and 3. All right. So 4 times 15 is going to give me 60. Minus, because there's a minus there, 4 times 1x is going to leave me with a 4x. And 4 times 1x again is going to leave me with another 4x. Okay? Now, we're going to multiply the bottom numbers. But since the bottom numbers are all getting multiplied by 1, the bottom numbers stay as they were. All right. So let's take a look here. Uh, 60 divided by 1 is still 60. Minus, let's see, uh, 2 goes into 4. 2 times, that should be a minus 2x. And these 4s are going to cancel. That'll just give me a positive 1x. Okay, Or you can just put an x. It doesn't really make now, again, we're trying to solve for x. So we're trying to get all the x's on one side, y'all, and all the numbers on the other. So if I have a minus 2x here, right underneath it, we'll put a yeah, positive 2x. And let's see, 1x plus 2x is going to leave me with a 3x, right? 3x is equal to 60. And finally, the last step, y'all, we're going to divide both sides by 3. And 3 goes into 60 uh, 20 times.
All right. So for the next one that I got here, y'all, I have uh, x over 3 plus 3 equals 5x over 6 plus 2. Again, my first step here, y'all, I'm going to think of this as a 1, and I'm going to think of that as a 1, okay? So that I have uh, fractions everywhere. Let me ask you guys a question. Between 3, 1, 6, and 1, what do you think my common denominator is going to be? 6. Excellent. Good. 6 over 1. No. The, your common denominator is always going to be at least this size, if not bigger. How do I know it's going to be 6? Because look what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to my multiplication table. Look up here real quick. Remember the numbers that we had were, were 1, 3, 6, and 1, right? So here's 1, here's 3, and here's 6. What number do they all have in common? That's how I know that's what my common denominator is, right? So that's why the, com the table is going to help a lot, right? Okay, so let's take a look. That's how we came up with the 6. Now, y'all, we're going to go through really, really slowly. 1. So, again, if it helps y'all, think of the number in front of that x as a 1x. So 6 times 1x is a 6x. Anybody know what 6 times 3? 18. Good. Okay. What about 6 times 5x? 30x. Good. And finally, 6 times 2? Perfect. So notice, though, we're going real slow, right? One piece at a time. 2, 3, 4. Okay, now we're going to take the bottom numbers. And since we're multiplying by 1, my bottom numbers, yeah, they're going to stay the same. That'll stay a 3, that'll stay a 1, that'll stay a 6, and that'll stay a 1. So notice, y'all, when we multiplied, we went really, really, really slow, right? Slow motion. I think I told you guys, and I might have told you guys, I taught my first class in 1997, so I don't know what you guys were doing in 1997. You weren't even born. Oh, man. I was born in 2001. Making me feel like an old man here. Man, you're making me feel old here, right? But, but you said you were born in 2001. In 2003, there was this hip-hop artist named Juvenile. And he had this song called Slow Motion for Me. Slow Motion for Me, right? So when I used to teach this poem in Austin, you guys, I used to throw that song out all the time. But I also realized 2003 was like 19 years ago. So so let's take a look here. 3 goes into 6. 2x, right? 18 divided by 1. 18. 6 goes into 30. 5x. Good. 12 over 1, boom. This problem looks a lot better, right? I don't have any fractions. And I can draw my red line, right? And I can say, look, I'm going to move the smaller x to the bigger x. Which x is smaller, 2 or 5? 2. 2. So let's put a minus 2x here and a minus 2x here. Those will go away. That's an 18. 5 minus 2 is 3x plus 12. Okay. So 18 equals 3x plus 12. So now I can go minus 12 and minus 12. And 18 minus 12 is 6 equals 3x. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do here, y'all, is we're going to divide by by 3, and we should come up with something like 2 equals x. I was teaching in Austin when 9-11 happened. Yeah. All right, so guys, we're going to do a couple more problems, and then we'll call it a day. We'll pick up the rest of it on Thursday, right? But I want us to do these, these last two problems, and then right here is where we'll pick up when we come back on Thursday, okay? 
So notice, when we come back on Thursday, we're going to look at problems that have decimals. We've done problems like this before. But let's finish up these two here. First thing I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to think of everything as a fraction. So I'm going to think of that number, that 1 is 1 over 1. And the next thing I want to think about doing here is look at my denominators. I have 4, and I have 5, and I have 1. What do you all think my common denominator would be? 20. Very good. Excellent. Good job, y'all. So 20 over 1, we're going to go once, twice, three times. Okay, so I told y'all we're going to go in slow motion. We're going to go super, super slow here, y'all. So look. From the 4 and the 5 and the 1, right? What do I got to do? Look at my chart, right? And figure out which is the smallest. So do me a favor. Look at 4 and 5. And then go to the right, and what's the number that they first, what's the first number they have in common? One. That's how we got it. Okay. Better? Yeah. Excellent. So look, y'all, I'm going to put this 20 right in front of those parentheses with a y minus 5. I'm not even going to distribute the 20 just yet. Okay? And then 20 times 1 is 20, and 20 times a negative y is a negative 20y, right? because there's a minus sign right here, so that's why I got that minus there. So again, notice the 20, I didn't even multiply it out yet. I just left it like that. Now, we're going to multiply the 1 times the bottom numbers, so this should be a 4, that should be a 1, and that should be a 5. Before we go on, are we okay? Did I lose you? Or did you? Okay. Are you okay? So look, y'all, remember what we did here. We're multiplying everything by 20 over 1, right? So look, I'm saying, let, I'm not even going to distribute that 20. I'm just going to put the 20 right in front of the y minus 5. Now, I'm putting it in front of there because do you see how everything is being divided by 4 in that first fraction? That's why I'm putting the 20 in front. I know I'm going to have to do some distributing, but I'm going really, really slow right now. And then 20 times 1 was 20, and 20 times y was at 20y, right? I didn't distribute it here for a reason. Okay, this is what I want to show you guys. Wouldn't 4 go into 20? Five times, right? So look, the number that I really have in front of there is now a 5. Does that make sense? Because we were able to divide it out. So look, now we're going to distribute the 5, because that's the number that I have in front. So 5 times y is a 5y. 5, 5 times 5 is a 25 equals 20 divided by 1 is still 20 minus uh, 5 goes into 20 four times, doesn't it? Okay. Same thing, y'all. Now I have my line in the middle. We're going to move the smaller y to the bigger y. Which is the smaller y? The 5y or the negative 4y? The negative 4. So since it's a negative, underneath it, y'all, we're going to put a positive 4y. Okay. So that's going to leave me with a 9y minus 25 equals, those are going to go away, that's a 20 right over here. Okay, we're almost done. Two more steps. We're going to add 25 to both sides. So 9y equals, let's see, 20 and 25. Everyone agree 45? And then last step, divide everything by, by 9. And y is equal to positive 5, right? But if you distributed the 20, you were going to come up with the same thing. You really would have gotten the same thing. Yeah, so the only thing I would tell you to do, if you're going to distribute that 20, what you would have had, Adriana, you would have had a 20y minus 100, right? Because 20 times 5 is 100. Okay, all of this is being divided by 4? 
right? Okay, so then remember what that means. If you're dividing everything by 4, you're dividing this piece by 4, and you're also dividing this piece by 4. So 4 goes into 20? Five times, right? Doesn't 4 go into 100? You still would have got the same thing. Yeah, you would have... Okay, yeah, so then you do it that way, you're going to get the same answer. Yeah, it'll, it'll still work out the same. So look, the next one we're going to do, we'll do it that way, and then you guys can decide which way looks a little bit better for you guys. Okay. So, y'all, we got one last problem here. We'll do this last one, and then we'll call it a day. Um, and y'all, it seems like the Wi-Fi is still down, so I don't know what you guys are going to do. You might want to, I don't know, I mean, I'm not telling you to go anywhere, but unless you got, like, Wi-Fi on your phone, you may not be able to log in because everything seems to, still seems to be down. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, I'm guessing if it's down here, it's probably down across campus. I don't, I don't really know, but I'm guessing it is. Yes, I was. Okay, so look, y'all, question. Between 3, 12, and 4, what do you think common denominator is? 12. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're going to go 12 over 1. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so y'all, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the other way. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 12 all the way through and show you, you'd really end up with the same thing, okay? You'd really end up with the same thing. So look, let's distribute the 12 all the way through. What's 12 times x? 12. 12x, right? 12x, yeah. What's 12 times 2? 24. Okay, equals 12 times x, again, is still 12x. And 12 times 5, I believe, is 60. Now, remember, we're multiplying the bottom numbers here by 1. So all of this is over 3. That's over 12. And that's over 4. Okay. Now, one thing I want to mention, y'all, when we're dividing everything here by 3, like the 3 is on the, on the bottom for everything, that means we've got to divide this number by 3, and we've got to divide that number by 3. So first question, how many times 3 go into 12? So there's a 4x minus, how many times 3 go into 24? 8. Very good. Everybody agree that those 12s will cancel? we got an x. Right? And then 4 goes into 60 should be 15 times. Okay, now I'm going to draw my line down the middle. We're going to move the smaller x to the bigger x. Which is the smaller x? Yeah, the x, so we're going to put a negative x here. Excellent, good. Very good. And a negative x there, so those will go away. So 3x minus 8 equals 15. So everybody agree we've got to add 8? To 3x equals, let's see, 15 and 8 should be something like 20, what, 23? And then the last step, y'all, we're just going to divide everything by... 3, and it doesn't go in nice and pretty, so I'm just going to leave my answer like that. I'm just going to leave my answer as 23 over 3. Okay. And so right there, y'all, we will stop with this part.